Welcome back to our yearly look at some of the MMORPGs we used to play. This time we're taking a look at Arc Age and we're gonna do an overview, answer some of the questions you might have like can we even play it? And more importantly, what happened to the game? Join me as we revisit Arc Age in 2024 and find out what happened. Arc Age is a PC MMORPG. And with that said, let's do this. Welcome back, Saviors GH here. Before we play the game from the beginning, first, what is Arc Age? Arc Age is an MMORPG developed by XL Games, offering an extensive open world with seamless exploration, in depth character customization, and tab targeting combat. Players can engage in various activities like farming, trading, and crafting. Now, going to Arc Age's website, they describe Arc Age as a thrilling fantasy sandbox MMORPG set in a world where players forge their own path, telling a story unique to them. One of the main features of Arc Age is its open world, which offers players a vast seamless environment to explore without loading screens, except when entering dungeons or instances. This open world is rich with diverse landscapes including islands and seas, which players can navigate through various means like gliders, mounts, vehicles, and ships. Beyond exploration, the open world supports a wide range of player-driven activities such as crafting, farming, and housing, with land ownership and customization directly impacting the game's environment. The open world also facilitates dynamic PvP interactions including faction wars, enable battles, adding to the emergent gameplay. Arcage's open world is complemented by an integrated player economy, flexible class system, with numerous skill set combinations, and WASD movement for immersive combat and navigation, making it a standout feature that defines much of the game's appeal and depth. Now, Arc Age was first released in South Korea in January 2013, and later launched in North America and Europe in September of 2014. The game was developed by XL Games, a well-known game development company in the MMORPG industry, and XL Games is primarily known for its PC and mobile games, with Arc Age being the most notable title. Beside Arc Age, the company has developed other games including Moonlight Sculptor, a mobile MMORPG based on the popular Korean novel, and Civilization Online, a now defunct MMO adaptation of the Civilization franchise. Arc Age has seen a mixed reception since its launch, shaped by its gameplay mechanics, updates, and monetization approaches. Initially, it garnered praise for its ambition sandbox elements such as open world PvP, naval combat, crafting, and housing, which offer players significant freedom in shaping their experiences. Its flexible class system, which allows combinations for three skill sets, was also well received. However, new players often struggled with the game's complexity and steep learning curve, and early technical issues, including bugs and performance problems, impacted the overall experience. Over time, the free-to-play model faced criticism for perceived pay-to-win elements, especially the purchasable labor points that accelerated progress, leading to player frustration. And to address these concerns, XL Games released Arc Age Unchained, a buy-to-play version intended to reduce pay-to-win elements, though it too faced criticism for additional monetization practices like the Arc Pass system. Despite regular updates and new content, which have both attracted and alienated players, Arc Age retains a niche appeal among fans of sandbox and open-world MMORPGs. The community remains divided on the game's direction, with some players appreciating its depth and player-driven economy, while others remain cautious about ongoing monetization issues. Now, let's talk about Arc Age monetization, noting that there was a free-to-play version and a buy-to-play version known as Arc Age Unchained. First, let's discuss the free-to-play Arc Age. In this model, players could download and play the game for free with optional purchases of the premium currency, credits. With credits, players could buy patron status which offered significant gameplay advantages such as increased labor regeneration, higher offline labor capacity, XP boost, reduced penalties on death, and enhanced drop rates. The marketplace also featured a range of consumables and cosmetics like costumes and mounts, and items for enhancing equipment through tempering and regrading. This model faced criticism for perceived pay-to-win elements, prompting the introduction of Arc Age Unchained to provide a fairer gameplay experience, but Arc Age Unchained didn't do well and it was merged into the live version. Now, Arc Age also has another version, Arc World, which is a free-to-play MMO with blockchain integration. 
This version of the game allows players to own in-game assets through non-fungible tokens or NFTs such as lands, buildings, and other items. This ownership enables players to monetize their investments within the game, creating a virtual economy where items can be bought, sold, and leased all through blockchain technology. Now, here's an update on what's happening to our age nowadays. You probably know that the NA and EU servers is shutting down on June 27, 2024. And here is the termination of service notification on their website. And according to this, it is with heavy heart that we announced the official closure of our ArcAge servers, effective June 27, 2024. Now, there's still ArcAge servers around. ArcWorld is still up. You can go check it out. And private server seems to be popping out left to right. I suggest you check out a private server, preferably the ones without monetization, because that's how private servers should be. Now, to show you more of the features and what the game has to offer, here is my gameplay from 2022. Have fun. Let's go play the game. Okay, guys, here's the race selection. Here's the Nguyen Alliance and the Haranian Alliance. Here's the Nguyen. Here's the female one. And here's the male Nguyen. Now, here's the male elf and female elf. Here's the female dwarf and male dwarf. Now, let's go to the Haranian side. Here's the male Harani and female Harani. Now, here's the female Firen and male Firen. Here's the male Warborn and the female Warborn. I think I played as a Warborn the last time I played, so we're not gonna play as a Warborn. So, how about let's go to the other side, the New Aeon Alliance. Let's play as an elf, a female elf. Let's go. Next. These are the different skill sets. First one over here is the Battle Rage, then Sorcery, Archery, Vitalism, Malediction, Swift Blade, Gunslinger, and Spell Dance. Guys, these are class skills, guys. And if I remember correctly, we can pick three. At the beginning, we only choose one. Like, for example, over here, let's pick Battle Rage. And then as we play the game, we can pick another one. I think it's up to three. Okay, so, next. And here's the character customization, guys. And there's nine face presets over here. Okay, in case you don't want to customize your character. And if you do want to customize your character, here's the different hairstyles. There's a lot of hairstyles to choose from over here, guys. Look at this. And this is where we can change the hair color. Then here goes the face details, guys. We can change the eyes. There are eye presets over here. And if you're not contented with the eye shape, there's a lot of sliders below. So you can really customize here. So it's the nose, lips. There goes the different lips. How about let's preview the lips? Oh yeah, let's try adjusting the mouth size. <laughs> okay, uh, how about let's just uh, make it the... How do we make this default? Okay, so how about let's pick this one. Yeah, let's go. And this is where we change the head face width, guys. And if you're not contented with the face width, there goes different sliders over here to adjust. Now customize face. This is where we can change the skin, brows, iris, style, and paint. What? Okay, tattoos, guys. I think these are tattoos or scars. Yeah, let's pick this one. I don't like the hair. Let's just pick a preset over here, this one. Yeah, this should be good enough. What's this preview? Ah, costume preview, guys. Let's test out the second one over here. Here's the third costume preview. Fourth, fifth, number six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Complete. Let's name the character. And we're in the game, guys. We can move the WASD, guys. And move the camera with the left mouse button by holding it. So, ooh, look at this. The game is running 100 frames above. I'm at 120. Well, you guys can't see it. YouTube can only offer 60 frames. Okay, well, anyway, let's check out our bag for beginner support boxes. How do we open the bag here? Okay. I am pressing I, but nothing's happening. We got potions, a buck. What is this star over here? Okay, I think it, that's a currency. It's a coin. Okay, so we got nothing on the bag. And look at this, guys. The graphics still looks kind of decent. Well, anyway, let's talk to this NPC over here and see what's her first quest. Autocomplete. Nice. This game sounds like Black Desert. Okay, so I'm assuming we need to go over here. We need to report to Eocad Brecken. Let's go. Can we super zoom out? Yes, we could. Look at this, guys. We can super zoom out. And look at this place. Man, if I remember correctly, this game is open world. And for an open world game, look at this. It looks kind of decent. Oh no. I remember having an argument with another guy saying that this is not an open world MMORPG. 
Well, he's kind of right though, because if I remember correctly, there are dungeons in this game, and when you enter a dungeon, it loads, and that kind of breaks the open worldness of the game, right? So, anyway, how about let's test out the combat, guys? Let's try out attacking this drywood elemental. What's the first skill? Why is it blocked out? Auto Press run. Okay, so let's try attacking this drywood elemental over here. Get closer. I'm just double clicking the enemy, guys. As you can see, we're auto attacking. This is tab targeting, guys. Classic tab targeting. But why is this blocked out? I'm pressing one. Man, I'm almost dying. Corpses that sparkle can be looted for items and coins. Take all the tutorial is talking. And why is this blocked out? What's happening here? Okay, let's try attacking another dry wood elemental. Why can't I use this skill? Oh, there he goes. When I click this, I can use the skill. Problem is, I can't press 1 to use the skill. Which is kind of annoying. It's just basic attack, guys. Uh oh, we're gonna die. Heal! Okay, there it goes. Loot. We can press F to loot, guys. So let's go to this Yokad Brecken. Look at this. In my opinion, the graphics still looks nice. What's happening here? The next NPC is too far. Look at this, guys. What the floppy bird? Anyway, the place looks nice. This is new to me, guys, because I haven't played as an elf. If I remember correctly, I played as a Bloodborne. Oh no, it's Warborn. <laughs> I forgot the name. Man, look at this area. Looks nice. And there goes the NPC finally. Man, they should have gave us some kind of a mount. Because, man, it took a while before I got here. Give me a mount, bruh. You can't break in. Talk to him. Oh, accept. Okay, he's giving me a box. Okay, oh, accept. Okay, let's open up the box. Whatever that is. Explorer bow. And then, right, we're a warrior, right? Equipped. What's our weapon? Sword. Okay, so explorer sword. Confirm. And then explorer shield. Yep, confirm. There it goes. Equip that. Equip the bow. And equip the shield. Are we changing appearance? Oh yeah, look at that. We got a new bow and a new sword. Okay, take the quest. What's our quest? Our next quest is we need to choose a dagger from the table. Okay, there it goes. Choosing the dagger. No, we're not choosing the dagger. Basically, there's a cutscene, guys. And we're picking a dagger. They're all the same, bruh. And there it goes. We picked up the dagger. And we're gonna throw it. We are. Let's go. Bullseye. Okay, turn over the quest. Accept. I'm liking the character models. Ooh, there it goes. We got a skill point. Open skills. Let's add this one. Battle Rage Charge. Put it over here. Man, why is this blocked out? Okay, anyway, open bag. Combo effects. Okay, according to the tutorial, there are combo attacks here. Okay, now we need to find Eocad Del Token. Man, everything here is Eocad. This one is Eocad. Eocad Bracken. Now we need to find Del Token. Can we have a mount? Bruh, can we have a mount? There's a doggo over here named Lucius. Oh yeah, I remember this. There's a lot of NPC here. Animals named Lucius. What is this? We can take a quest from here. Learn skills. I already have that. Man, this area is very detailed. Now look at this. Another Lucius NPC. <laughs> okay, we need to go over here. And I think that's where we can find Eocad Del Token. Let's go. And look at this. There's a cart. Ooh. Can I ride that? Anyway, let's go to the quest destination. And look at this area. And there goes Del Token. Talk to him. Select a reward. Plate armor. Get another quest. Choose my weapon. But I think I got an equipment. Open up my bag. Man, I'm pressing I. What's happening here? It's not opening. Okay. Press this. Give me armors. There it goes. Are we changing appearance when we equip armors? Let's zoom in, guys. There goes a character. Let's equip this body armor. Why is this cloth? I chose plate. Ah, what's happening here? This is plate. According to the name of the item, it's cloth. Okay, and oh, look at this. Somebody playing. <laughs> nice. Okay, let's take the weapon over here. Get the weapon. And there it goes. We got the weapon. Turn over the quest. Yokad. There it goes. Oh, accept. Auto complete the reward. Now what? We need to show the competition blade to a new and knight. New and knight. According to the quest compass, it's over here. Why is this NPC named Yokad? Even this one, Eocad. Everybody's Eocad. Okay. Man, look at this area. This is massive. And where's the knight? Okay, there it goes. A new knight. 
Look at this other guy over here. Somebody's playing. <laughs> okay. Talk to the new knight. How do we do this, bruh? Open up the bag. Show him the competition blade. There it goes. We're showing the competition blade. And what is this? I think we need to fight. Are we fighting? Boy! Oh, man. Why is this blocked out? What's happening here? Okay. Destroy him. Use the skill. Oh, yeah. There it goes. We're done with this. And there's an airship over there. If I remember correctly, we can ride that to go to other places. Okay, guys. So how about let me just play for a few hours. Maybe I'll redo it. Pick another class because I don't like this melee class. Okay, anyway. See you guys in a bit. I played for like a few hours now and I'm level 31. And I haven't really encountered anything special like an instance dungeon, a boss fight, or something interesting. But I do like the traveling from point A to point B in a way. Although... It's starting to get annoying because the quest is getting farther and farther to the next region. And what I usually do there is just talk to an NPC that's going to tell me to go to this next region, to a far, far away place, and talk to another NPC. Rinse and repeat. There's hardly any diversity. But I do kind of remember trying to get roots and I fought some plant creature on a swamp. The combat is tab targeting and this is not the best example because one, Click to move is disabled and that really helps with tab targeting because we can move with the mouse and attack with the keyboard. And with this, you move with WASD and attack with 1, 2, 3, 4. <laughs> you can imagine, it's kind of awkward. I can maybe get used to this or maybe reconfigure my keybinds. Now, I did like the equipment system that they have here because we don't get new equipments all the time and we just upgrade them with the quest rewards, which is a great idea. No more thinking about, do I dump this item or what? So that's nice. The class system is also good. I like that we can select other class skills and combine it with our main skills. Being a gunslinger that can use magic and use healing is definitely a weird one. This is good. It sure grabbed my attention. Another feature that I like is we can buy inventory bag spaces with the in-game currency. So there's no inventory management nightmare here. At least at the early part of the game. Now as for the graphics, the game has graphical glitches and sometimes the UI would go black and I can't attack and to attack, I must manually click the skill so it's kinda annoying. I have to restart the client to get the bug fixed. Regardless, the map is massive and for something this massive, I would expect something that looks crap. But it's not. Every area has something interesting. Like for example, at one time I'm in a village, the usual starting area, then I'm in a lush forest running to go to the next area. Then arid lands, desert, and an impressively designed city, which is amazing for a game with this kind of scale. The game kind of reminds me of The Witcher 3 or GTA games because it's open world. Well, anyway, there's a few ways to get to point A and point B. First is the usual running, or you can use your mount, then you can also glide around, or take a ride from a cart. Arcage at the beginning certainly felt more like of a traveling game than an MMORPG because I spent more time going from point A to point B rather than hunting, gathering, and doing quests. Now as for the story, most of the cutscenes are just pictures where they just zoom in and zoom out to add some kind of effect while back. the narrator is talking. And as I progressed a lot farther and farther from the game, suddenly the voice acting was cut and there's no more voice acting. They did put an actual effort on the story. I just wish it was done properly. And what else can I say here? Oh yeah, the game is running pretty well. And for the most part, it's running very smooth. Overall, I can see myself playing Arc Age. But with how good current MMORPGs nowadays, Arc Age will have difficulty trying to get my attention. And that's Arc Age in 2024. And guys, do you want to see the latest MMO news? There it goes on the screen. Leave a like before you go. And this is Game Hardcore. See you in the next one.